Good day, learners. This is your Learn at Home program. My name is Haruna Manase Yerima, your agri teacher. Today, in our agri, we are going to consider a topic that says agricultural pests. Agricultural pests. Uh, you may be wondering why your parents normally buy some chemicals to add up to crops before they'll keep them inside the store. And in the farm, you discover that there will be a time that your parents, those that are farmers, will carry chemicals to spread on the crops. You may be wondering why this thing happened. Reason being that all the crops are, uh, carries what we call pests. They will be in the field, they will be in a store. That's why I see them doing all these things. Having said that, let's look at uh, the introduction. Introduction says, apart from weeds that can cause trouble to our crops in the farm, we also have pests. Pests too can cause damage to the crops we are cultivating either in the farm or in the store. Then, the definition of crop, uh, the, uh, crop pest now, we're going to look at it. Say, crop pest is any organism capable of causing damage to crops in the field or crops products in the store. Yes, they can cause problems while the crops are in the field or while you are packaged them and they are in the store. They can still cause problems to them or damage to them. Majority of cross pests are in invertebrates. When we say invertebrates, we are referring to the animals that have no backbone. Most of the pests we have, they are invertebrates. Only few of them that are vertebrates. Only few of them. Insects, uh, we have crop pests are invertebrates, e.g. insects and earworms. All these ones, they are uh, pests. Then some vertebrates, e.g. birds and mammals, also cause serious damage to plant uh, crops or crop plants. Yes, they also cause serious damage. We can see examples like birds. Birds too, they are what? They are vertebrates because they have backbones. They too, they can cause uh, damage to the crops. Having said this, let's look at the classification of these insect pests. The insect pests can be classified into two. Yes, we are, they can be classified based on their mouth parts, that's mode of feeding, and they can also be classified based on their locations. Then classification based on their mouth parts, that's the first one. When we're talking about the mouth parts, the nature of their mouth differs. Then we have a, on this, we're going to look at insect pests are subdivided into three, three groups under classification by mouth parts. Group one is biting and chewing insects. Biting and chewing insects, they can bite at the same time chew. We know what we talk, when we talk about biting, that is if you put something in your mouth, you can bite it with your teeth and at the same time you can chew it. So also, this insect we are talking about, they also have uh, teeth to bite and chew. Then, the next one is piercing and sucking insects. Piercing and sucking insects. These insects also, they pierce into either the tuber of crops or they pierce into the stem of a, a, a crop in order to suck sap. Then, the last one there is boring and chewing insects, the bore horse. This one, the bore horse, either in the tuba or in the uh, stem of a crop. Then let's look at them one after the other. Biting and chewing insects. And we want to look at them, how, we want to describe them now. Biting and chewing insects, for you to identify them, you look at the mouth parts of the insect in this category are what modified for biting and chewing plants parts. They are being modified in such a way that they can bite 
at the same time to the, plant, uh, the crop plants. That is the part of it, part of whether they live or they shoot or they branch or whatsoever that they can bite there, part of the plant. The next one says, the mouth part consists of mandibles, maxillae, and labrum. That is, it consists a part that is round so that to be able to bite, you know that if you look at it, the mouth is just round. And it has some things like scissors. It will be shaking like this. That is the mandible. They'll be able to bite and tear things with it and chew. They also, they, they usually eat and damage the vegetative part that is fruit and seed of plants. Yes. If you look at yams, they can destroy yams. If you look at uh, uh, beans, you still see them destroying beans. They also, they reduce the photosynthetic ability of crop plants. Photosynthesis, we have done it in our basic science. We say photosynthesis is a process whereby plants manufacture its own food by using sunlight through its greenish parts. You see, the vegetative part is the part that the plant can use in, cult in manufacturing its own food. That is where it will tap the, uh, the uh, sunlight, the, the heat, whatsoever that it's uh, having, because it's there that serves as the, uh, uh, the kitchen of the plants. So once this uh, insect have eaten of the greenish part of this plant, it, has, it finds it difficult to manufacture its own food. That is, photosynthesis will not properly take place in such crops. Then they also cause reduction in crop growth and yield. Yes, they reduce the growth of the crops and at the same time, the yield of that, the, the crops will not be effective. Then, examples are grasshopper, cricket, termite, locust, etc. These, these are the, some of the examples. We have them many, but let's consider this. As you can see here, this one is called caterpillar. Yes, this can, is, a, is, example of a, is an example of a biting and chewing insect. You can see it is feeding on the leaf of a plant. It's feeding on the, on the leaf of a plant. It has a mandible mouth that will enable it to chew, to bite and tear the plant. And at the same time, it can destroy the plant. The next one is piercing and sucking insects. Piercing and sucking insects. If they say pierce, it's just like having a sharp object uh, choking it inside something, it will go straight. So also, their mouth is very sharp like a needle that can pierce into the plant and cause damage. The mouth part of piercing and sucking insects are modified into stylet and proboscis. When we say proboscis, it's very long and uh, sharp so that it will be able to penetrate in the crops or in, in the uh, tuber or in the uh, vegetative part of the crop. The, the, pierce, the pierce plant, a plant part, and suck sap and juice. Yes, they suck sap. There is liquid inside a plant that this uh, pest like to use. They would like to suck it. That is, as they are piercing into it, they suck the sap, they suck the liquid that are inside the plant, thereby rendering it useless. The next one says, they transmit viral disease through their piercing, sucking activities. Yes, as they suck, they pierce, they transmit viral disease. There are viral disease that affect, it's on, not only human beings that suffers virus disease, plants also suffers viral disease, but this viral disease can be transmitted by piercing and sucking insects. The next one says, they introduce toxic, toxic uh, substances into the crops during feeding, which lead to the death of the crops. Yes, these toxic uh, uh, substances that have been introduced to the plant can lead to the death of the plant. That's why you discover that in the farm, some crops will just die like this. Nothing happened to it. You discover that they will just die like this because the insects have injected or the pests have injected some toxic substances into the plant. So that's why the plant now will not survive it, it has to die. Examples include aphids, mealy bugs, 
scale insects, moths, white flies, cotton stainers, leaf hoppers, etc. The example of this, you can see from here. You can see the mud parts as it is. You, the design of the mud parts is different from the other one we saw. Because this one, it can pierce directly to the, uh, the crop. You see, like this one, you can find it even in your mess, in the store. You can get it there. So, the next one is boring insects. Boring insects. They can bore and chew at the same time. The, the mouth parts of uh, boring insects are modified into rotrum. That is cough. It coughs. The rotrum means coughing. It will, the mouth is coughed like this. It's so that it will be able to carve inside the, the, the plant. The boar horse. If you look at some yams tuba, you discover that there are holes inside there. It caused by this kind of uh, uh, insect pest. The boar holes into the seeds, thereby causing physical damage. Even the mess, you can see this uh, insect I've just shown, the weevils, can bore holes inside the uh, mess to render it useless. There is the endosperm and reduce the food value, uh, the food value of the crops. Yes, the endosperm is the part that enables the plant to germinate if you plant it. So if you put them in the store, you discover that this uh, plant, whether in the field, they can still attack the part or, uh, that part and destroy it. Once it has destroyed it, it has raised the food uh, value of that thing. It has that, reduced the food value of that crop. So also, they reduce they also reduce the viability of infected seeds. That is, it can no longer last longer. If there is this need to, for, the, for, it, for you to use it at that point in time, if you notice that something has happened to it like this, it, could, it will no longer be safe for a longer period of time. That's why we say it affects the viability of that seed. The examples are mess weevils, rice weevils, stem borers, yam beetles, etc. As you can see here, this one, even though it's thorny, the back is the back. But if you look at, at the uh, front there, you see, at the back there, you see the mouth uh, parts. They are there, the, the mouth part is in such a way that it's curved so that it will bore inside a yam tuber and destroy it. Or the weevils, as we have earlier discussed, they have uh, curved mouth that they can bore inside uh, uh, the seat of uh, either any grains. They will render it useless. Classification based on location. We want to look at their classification based on location. We have seen classification based on their mouth part. Now we want to consider classification based on their locations. There are two locations, as I've earlier stated. I said uh, insect pests can attack crops while they are still in the field. They can also attack crops while packaged in the store. That is, these are the two uh, locations that we're going to look at today. We say the field pest and uh, storage pests. Then, field pests. These are insects that attack crops on the field. Examples are grasshoppers, ca uh, caterpillars, crickets, locusts, cotton, stainers, etc. These are the examples. If you plant crops in the field, definitely one of these insect pests can attack the crops from the farm. Like example, as you are seeing here, what you are seeing here is a uh, grasshopper. It can attack your crops while they are still in the farm or on the field. They can destroy the vegetative part of the plant, thereby rendering it useless. So also, let's consider storage pests. They attack crops produced in the store. They eat seed content and reduce it to powder. Yes, that's why sometimes if you open the back of your mess in the store, you discover that there are some flowers there, even though you have not taken it to grinding meal. There are some flowers that you find inside the back. Those flowers are caused by the insect pest that attack the crops in the store. They thereby render it useless. So weevils are filled, are, are filled to store pest. Yes, weevils are filled to store pest. They can attack the crops in the farm while it is in the, on the field, and also you can carry it from the field to the store because there they attack it. They can eat, they can feed on it while it is in the store, so they can still feed on it while it is 
in the field. So you have to take note of it. That's why there is need, if you bring the crops from the farm, you will process them, make sure that you put in some chemicals that will kill all the field insects that you are carrying along with, so that they should not attack the crops while they are in the, pest, in the, in the stores. They can be carried along with the crops produce, uh, products from the field to the store, thereby causing damage on the field uh, in the store. Yes, the damage they have been causing in the field, they can transfer it to the store. The examples are weevils, bean beetles, mouths, etc. Then you can see them here. These are the examples. Those are things that can affect the, the insect pests that can affect the crops from the field down to the store. Other crop pests, that is, they are not insect pests this time around. Because earlier I told us that we have uh, uh, all the, uh, most of the, uh, the insect pests, they are invertebrate. And at the same time we say, we mentioned that we have some that are vertebrate. There's some of them that are vertebrate, we call them non-insect pests. We call them non-insect pests. This includes the mammas. When we're talking of mammas, we refer to the monkeys, we refer to he even human beings. We are also mammals. So, and various, uh, they are mammals of various size. This one that can affect them, they are mammals of uh, various size. They attack cross plants mainly on the field. Although, a few of them also cause serious damage to store uh, produ produce. Yes, you see, like uh, rats. Rat is one of the mammals. They can also affect the crops while they are in the store. That's why in your store, you always find rat, uh, rats in the store because they feed on the crops you store in that uh, store. So they are one of the mammals we are talking about. Human being too can be one of it. And uh, uh, monkeys can be one of it. Then they, contain, they contaminate grains with their feces and urine. Yes, they contaminate the food. That's why sometimes if you look, check the crops you keep in the uh, store, you discover that the crops there have been contaminated, have changed color. The reason being that the crops, uh, the, uh, pe uh, the store paste have urinated on the crops you have kept there. And uh, they, sometimes if you bring out, let's say rice, you discover that there are some black, black things that you are seeing there. They are nothing but the, she the feces from the, ra the rats that are in that store, they can contaminate the food. So we have to take care of them properly to destroy them so that they should not contaminate it. Once the food has been contaminated, they can transmit a disease called Lassa fever. That's why this time around, they're saying we should not uh, be leaving our food open because of this kind of a thing. Rats can climb on it, urinate on it, if you eat that food, definitely you are going to be affected with Lassa fever. Examples are squirrel. Squirrels, you see them in the bush. And then grass cutters, they are also in the bush. Rats, you can see them either in the bush or also in the store. Monkeys, mice, wild, and rabbits, etc. Then, uh, bats, they are important pests of uh, cereals and fruit crops. They cause serious damage to crops such as rice, maize, sorghum, millet, banana, oil palm, and papa. Yes, even in your farm or in your house, perhaps your parents have uh, what we call papa. They, they can plant papa around the, your house there. It's good that when the papa is wrapping, you see some birds will come and perch on them and begin to destroy them. Those ones too, they are what? They are called a pest. They are non insect pests, but they are called pests. They also cause damage to the crops. Even if you have a rice farm, you can see them plenty there, feeding, uh, feeding on the rice you have cultivated and trying to, uh, to reduce the yield of the farm. So they can cause confusion to the farm too. The common examples are weavers, bats, weaver bats, weaver bats. You can see them, they, they are yellowish in color. They always remove the leaves to go and make their weevils. Squirrel, bush, fowls, etc. Then they feed on leaves of plants, especially seedlings, and 
vegeta uh, vegetables, thereby reducing their photosynthetic ability. Yes, they feed on the vegetative parts. You know, the seedling, when we're talking of seedling, we're not referring to the seed again. The one that has germinated is refers to the seedlings because it has started shooting. Then they feed on these uh, seedlings too, to destroy it. That's why if you plant, as soon as the crop has germinated, it is called that this uh, bush fowl will come and be digging it to remove the seeds and destroy the crops. And uh, the crops will no longer germinate well. Then, summary. In this lesson, we said pest is any organism that can cause damage to crops in the field and crops in the store. We look at the classification of insect pests based on their mouth part and also based on their uh, uh, location. These are the things we have considered in this lesson. Assignment. Classify insect pests based on their mouth parts and location. As we have uh, earlier discussed, as we have earlier discussed, you can find out for any agri textbook you get, go through it and get these insect pests and then classify them based on their mouth parts and at the same time mention effect of insect pests to crops. You can mention them, what do they cause to the crops? As we have earlier discussed, stay safe and many thanks till I come your way next time. Thank you.